you been doing? Ah, uh, this and that. Had breakfast, read the paper, saved the world. The stupidest. Now that's a well-made shoe. Welcome back to a special movie nights, everyone. Back at Phelan's place. Good Lloyd. In the name of the Lloyd! That was hard to watch. <laughs> you know any movie, you know, where you have a dim-witted lead going through things and things just kind of work out for them? Usually there's some kind of balance to that with a more straight character, but the stupid says, we don't need that. We just fill it with stupid constantly because stupid equals funny. <laughs> the car won't start. Before you let everyone know what you feel about the movie, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna wait for my true opinions at the end. <laughs> he didn't like it. Now the story of a wealthy family who lost everything and the one son who had no choice but to keep them all together. All right. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, The Stupids is a 1996 comedy movie based on a 70s series of children's books of the same name. The Stupids about a family who is very dumb. And that's about the extent of it. They're just really stupid. I think the comic was supposed to be, you know, comical, but the movie's supposed to be soul-crushing. <laughs> they went in a different direction. They were books. They weren't comics. They okay, were... books. <laughs> <laughs> this is the diary of his twisted schemes. And I remember these existing. I don't remember if I read them, but I, I remember that I knew that. And I remember when this came out. And when I was a kid, I liked this movie, but all I could remember about it was that there was something about he thought that the trash was being stolen. Oh no, someone stole in our garbage again. But I didn't realize that that was the plot of the entire movie, really. <laughs> it sort of is, like a lot of the plot is wondering if the plot's over or not, and then it just keeps going. It's like a series of dumb events connected together very loosely by Mr. Stupid Tom Arnold and his family. <laughs> Back when Tom Arnold was a headliner. Yeah. It feels like you're spending the movie wondering when it's going to start, and then at some point it shifts to when is this going to end? Because it, it has no structure to it. It really is just a series of things happening. Perhaps there is no moral to this story. Exactly! It's just a bunch of stuff that happened. There's no like, okay, we're getting to the middle point of this. Like there's no act one, act two, act three. Let the final showdown begin. It just feels like, okay, did, did they finish it because they got rid of these guys? Mm -hmm. I get, no, but this is still happening. And then there's some dumb thing that you'd forget was part of it would come back into play. Yeah, like, and we watched it the first time and then the second time to make this video. Like, I remembered certain stupid things happening and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot this brain dead part of it too. Like, Aliens! Of course! Why not? Ha ha ha! Cause lol random, so funny! <laughs> it's just a bunch of stuff that happened. They're so brain dead stupid, like it doesn't make sense that they're still alive. <laughs> Years ago when I was 23. A good example of this done right, Dumb and Dumber. Mm -hmm. It's the same premise, right? The characters the, that you're focusing on are too stupid to possibly exist. Mm -hmm. But everyone else around them is just normal people reacting to this, and a series of circumstances uh, lead them into trouble. Which is what happens in this movie. Mm -hmm. Except in that movie, Everyone else was a normal person reacting to these cartoonishly stupid people. And in this one, so much of it is a reach that everyone around them has to be a massive idiot too for any of it to work. Part of the plot of this one reminds me of the man who knew too little, but the crappy version. <laughs> because it's like, you know, Bill Murray and that one kind of falls into this spy plot, but doesn't know what he's doing. He thinks it's just the set up play scenario he's doing. And then he keeps locking into thwarting the bad guys, which is what Mr. Stupid Tom Arnold does in this movie a bunch of times. But 
It's just, it's not funny. You don't want to see <laughs> this guy succeed either. He's just annoying. <laughs> like the part where he thinks he's a bush is so annoying. <laughs> I remember how pissed you were when we watched that the first time. Like, what the fuck? Half man, half plant. He dwells in two worlds, but is the master of both. Oh, man voice, you are nature's greatest wonder! Because it just goes beyond like that they're dumb in any sort of believable sense. It takes it to that next step and there's nothing really funny about it. It's just, oh, he fell, he's in a bush and then he thinks he's a bush. Poor fools thought it was a bush. What the? <laughs> ah. What in the world? I feel like uh, I, sh I should try and explain the plot of this a little bit to people what little there is. <laughs> So basically, the beginning of the movie, their trash is picked up and Stanley Stupid thinks that someone is stealing their garbage. So he goes to investigate. Uh, his family believes that he is kidnapped and then goes searching for them and that leads into other things. And eventually, he ends up getting involved in this illegal arms trade. The, this, uh, which is going down in a junkyard, which is where the garbage is being taken to because... Apparently those go together it, now. It doesn't make a lot of sense. They think that he's like uh, some sort of assassin or some sort of like inside guy that knows what he's yeah, doing and is playing stupid. Yeah, they think he's like stupid. a secret agent, yeah. Yeah, they think he's like uh, secretly pretending to be stupid but, but really good at what he does. And he just stumbles on this. Like y you were saying, you know, he shows up at the garbage dump just to figure out where his garbage is going. By the way, I don't blame him for being suspicious. These garbage men show up in the middle of the night with, with gas, gas masks. masks. Yeah, this is the strangest garbage pickup I've ever seen. I'll give Mr. Stupid Tom Arnold this one thing. That is very suspicious garbage man he has. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who wouldn't be suspicious, right? What in the world? I don't understand, like, at the beginning of this movie, like, how these people survived up to this point. Like, where does he think his garbage is going? Like, what's <laughs> what, he... What are they going to do with it if I they know. don't want it taken? <laughs> yeah, we don't want garbage taken, but we want to put it in a, a bag in a can at the end of the road and hope it's there the next day. I don't know what, they're what the line of logic is there. I guess there is none. No, there's really no <laughs> line of logic, which is... <laughs> they, don't, they don't do it in a, in a consistent way. It's all a reach, and it's all just scene by scene. Because there's certain things, like you were talking about when we're watching it, that are inconsistent about it. Yeah. Like, they don't know what a key is in a yeah, car, car at key. one point. But then other times they do, just depending on the scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like this, he drives a car away from the dump, which isn't even his car, fine. And then like he gets home a bit later and he's like, the car won't start, like waving his hand by the ignition <laughs> without the key. He's like, <laughs> like, and then they're all like dumbfounded by this. I don't understand the these arms dealers, right? Like this this military guy uh, played by Mark Metcalf, who mm. is uh, I guess he just has a grudge against the people Who's in the military. For possibly this his character from Animal House. Yeah, he's supposed <laughs> to be. Yeah, because John Landis directed this movie, and I guess this is a callback to the Animal House character, but it doesn't make sense with what happened to that character in that movie. Mama, he's a dead man. Mama, lad. Dead! Dead! I gave my life to the military. He has this grudge, so he's gonna sell all these military weapons to these foreign agents. And Stanley, stupid, just stumbles in there, and they think that he's part of it. But I'm, I'm wondering, like, how did he send out these invitations? Like, it's just like, it, anyone can show up? Yeah. And they just assume he's one of them? Like, anyone... what if someone else was just stumbling upon the junkyard? Yeah, he just sent it out, random feeler, like, are you a villain? Do you need weapons? <laughs> Come to this junkyard at this time. How did this guy know about this? <laughs> did you put out an ad in the paper? Like, yeah. illegal arms deal going on? <laughs> Understand. I'm with the army, but don't tell anyone I'm doing this. <laughs> Was he this dumb an animal? <laughs> what in the world? 
Yeah, there's a few director cameos too, right? They had Robert Wise, Mick Garris, there, there might have been some others, but that's kind of a trademark of them to like cast each other in their movies. I mean, wise guy! <laughs> <laughs> Buster? Sorry, Dad. Before we go any further, I feel I should tell people we're in a massive heat wave right now, so if it looks like we're melting... It's because we are. It's because we are. By the end of this review, we're just going to be half our size like a couple of candles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the stupids just um gave us the sweats. Like, we're like, oh, it's so stupid. Uh, 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 I have the vapors. <laughs> You had to drink when we're watching this. Yeah, how oh, I cope with Tom Arnold. <laughs> I've uncovered the crime of the century. If I can give the movie anything here, like there is certainly an aesthetic and a, a thing that they're going for that I don't think quite came together. No, like the stupids have this weird 50s aesthetic. The rest of the world looks like the 90s. They don't even drive like a 50 style car or anything it's just like a buick or something and i'm like but well, that doesn't match mm -hmm. the thing going on there like but everything in their house is is cartoonish and it's built to these ridiculous proportions and colors and their outfits e even though they're 50s inspired they do have things about them that are are exaggerated you know like the huge skirts for the girls and the ties are extra wide mm -hmm. and, and i appreciated that they were going for an aesthetic with this and I think I like the idea that this is a movie that really is about nothing that becomes something. You know, like everything sort of builds up into this, this huge deal over nothing because they're just so stupid. I just feel like the world around it let down those characters. <laughs> what in the world? A lot of the time it's just the normal people react to the dumb things they say like they're saying something right or intelligent. And it's a stretch to get there a lot of the time is also <laughs> a thing that bothers me. Like Sometimes you could be like, okay, yeah, they can misinterpret the dumb thing they said as somewhat making sense. But other times it's like, wow, you know, you clean the entire universe. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I do because of this stupid room we're in being, <laughs> representing the universe at the art gallery. Like, <laughs> Hail to thee, O oh Lord. Actually, it's pronounced Lloyd. All these years we've been saying it wrong. I do respect that scene, though, because mm. it's a, a take on a real book that they did in the series called mm. The Stupids Die. <laughs> <laughs> Where they think that they died because they're in the dark. <laughs> like, so they think uh. that they're dead because they go into this... Uh, what do you call it when they have like the space shows on the ceiling? Mm -hmm. Is it a planetarium? Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, they go into one of these things and then they accidentally get have the lights turned off on them. So they think that they have died and they meet this janitor named Lloyd who they mm -hmm. think is the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think like, I don't know, that's almost something. The way he reacts to them is really weird, but I think that's one of the more effective scenes. I'm just... <laughs> I think, like, maybe you could have done it in a more funny way, but just, I don't know, the way it comes off in the movie where they shut the lights out and they're like, oh, we're dead! Like, it just annoys me. <laughs> I think maybe the whole movie annoys you. <laughs> what in the world? What in the world? Like, Tom Arnold's Oscar moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Oscar goes to Tom Arnold as Stanley Stupid. And that's the clip they show. What in the world? See, they would win two Oscars for this. It would mm. be for, for Tom Arnold's performance and also for their rendition of I'm My Own Grandpa. I'm my own grandpa. Everybody! I'm my own grandpa. I don't understand how that even fits in this movie. It's so random. Like, Tom Arnold gets drug onto a stage when they're at a TV studio randomly. And it's like a talk show where they're trying to get weird stories from people. Like, one of those stupid Jerry Springer or Maury type things. Yeah. 
And it's like, her story is, I don't know, she married her cousin or something, and then they go to Tom Earl, and he's like, I'm my own grandpa! <laughs> uh, oh. And they have the music track. Yeah, right? then they play a song for him as he bursts out in this song, like, wait, this guy's too stupid to remember that he needs keys to start his car sometime. <laughs> but he has this whole song planned out if he randomly gets dragged out onto a show. Why would he... I don't know why he would have the the wits to come up with this lie mm -hmm. while he's on the show when he didn't even realize he was being put on a show in the first place. No. And he's getting dragged out with gladiators and they weren't even on that show. I don't, I don't know why any of this happened. I don't know why Captain Kangaroo's in the movie. I, I don't know why there's aliens. I don't know why their pets are, are, are claymation stop motion things. Yeah. I, I don't know why a lot of things well, happen. <laughs> the pets look like they do in the books, right? They, I think so. Like, yeah, they basically look like if you just took them from the book and placed them in this movie. But yeah, it's so bizarre. Like, the first time we watched it and that cat showed up, we're just like, what is happening? Why? <laughs> but it's it's not enough of a cartoon world for it to, to entirely gel together, is no. the thing. Like, I would respect it if it was kind of like a Pee Wee's Playhouse type thing. Like, everything in this world is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not. And if it was just them, there should be more of a reaction from people that they are a bunch of weirdos. Like, it doesn't go for fully either way, so it just seems weird. It's like, oh, people seem like they should be normal, but then they're like idiots, and then like random cartoony things happen like an assassin tries to kill mr stupid tom arnold at one point and he like shoots him with some uh air for uh, filling up a tire and like which makes a <laughs> gag go in his mouth oh, and then he falls into some tires and then he accidentally punctures one goes flying into the air because you know a bunch of old tires sitting in a pile or Filled that tight, like massive exaggeration of air pressure. Yeah, on counts. Like that could <laughs> ever happen. <laughs> Everything's crumbling around yeah. us because the stupids. This guy, it's a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> I've uncovered the crime of the century. The stupid assassin goes flying in the air. He crashes into the roof of a gas station, which has chickens on top of it for what? some what? reason. Why were they there? <laughs> It's not funny enough to be a good joke, to be random. It's just like, you're confused. You're like, there were chickens on top of the roof of a gas station? Why? That seems pretty senseless, but whatever. There was a bargain wig shop? Yeah, it's like the laziest redress of a store in something, because it's just like you saw the part of the actual store, which is just called the bargain shop, and they yeah. put bargain the wig store. <laughs> There's so many things in this movie. I'm going to keep comparing it to Dumb and Dumber, because I think that's a, a good, it's similar apt. movie. It's an apt thing to, to compare it to, because Dumb and Dumber, they did stupid things within the real world. They didn't turn into cartoons or, or not work like the way the world works. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, there's a scene in the movie where uh, they're in a newspaper office and they've gotten onto the computer and they're trying to find the dad, so they stick a picture of him in the floppy drive, which somehow ends up blowing up all of the computers around it. Watch out! Let's go! We'd better get out of here! Let's go! That seems pretty senseless, but whatever. And also, prints the paper with this nonsense joke headline that someone had put in, and also puts his picture in, and then also puts his name as the author of this piece. Mm -hmm. Which then gets sent to aliens who are offended by this and can mm. somehow read human language yeah. and then come to Earth for a, a non-punchline. Such a chain of <laughs> events there. A floppy drives a scanner, blowing up computers, immediately sends it to print, and it gets to outer space. Like, what? <laughs> Magic has to exist yeah. for this to make any sort of sense. Yeah, like, why do these dumb aliens who aren't even on Earth, why are they getting an Earth newspaper? <laughs> I don't understand any of this. Wait a minute, what am I doing? I cooked up some insane conspiracy theory and put myself in the middle of an illegal weapons deal with some of the world's most dangerous men. I've risked my life and the lives of my family in a scheme that makes absolutely no sense at all. I did laugh at the, um, the fantasy sequence. They have this whole plot 
about Sender because Stanley Stupid used to work at the post office and he wondered who this sender was that everyone was sending letters to. And so they think that this Mr. Sender is behind this whole conspiracy which connects to all of these different things that they've encountered in the movie. And they have this fantasy sequence where Mr. Sender is Christopher Lee as like the needful things demon reading letters and it's all connected with uh, the police and yeah, with these people at this Chinese restaurant. The mother gets a dumb, a bit of a stretch thing. It's sort of funny, I guess, that she thinks the police kidnapped her kids. It's like maybe funny for two seconds and then it <laughs> goes on too long like everything. What are you trying to do, you darn bee? Can't you see I'm trying to drive? Oh my god, the drive bee! I like the drive bee. <laughs> that yeah. was kind of funny. <laughs> that was great. What in the world? The Christopher Lee scene should almost be funny because of how over the top ridiculous it is that they're imagining this villain. But the way they do it too is just like, Stanley Stupid like points at a, his whiteboard with the name Sender on it and then it kind of zooms into this. So like initially before it like kind of starts incorporating every dumb thing they said, like you almost think like the movie's gone there. Like, there's really a sender villain. Yeah. I was kind of laughing because I thought, like, it all was real. Mm -hmm. It would almost be funnier if it turned out there really was a sender and all of this stuff was a conspiracy and they were entirely correct. Yeah, yeah what if you played with it that way? Like, the movie presents them <laughs> like they're stupid and all these series are moronic, but it is all true. Like, that might have almost been something, too. Your job is to kidnap anyone who discovers my diabolical plan. Including children. It goes so long, you're just like, what? Why, why is Christopher Lee in this? Why is he doing this? <laughs> it's a funny cameo. <laughs> Uh, what was that? <laughs> that's me about to pass out from this movie and the heat. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of on us, though, if we watch this movie and expect anything else, because it was stupid. I mean, I, I guess it was everything that it promised it yeah. would be. <laughs> they still promised it was a comedy, and it wasn't. <laughs> this was not John Landis' best. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was far from his finest hour. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do think this has sort of a cult following now, though. Like, mm -hmm. it did terribly in the box office. Um, it made 2.5 million, and the budget was 25 million. Um, I don't know how much of this went to Tom Arnold. I feel like an obscene amount probably <laughs> went to him for this. What in the world? What in the world? <laughs> Would you recommend this movie to anyone, even ironically? No. No. <laughs> no. It was too much of a headache. No, it, yeah, it, it's not. It's not really even that funny, ironically. I don't feel. <laughs> it depends on your tolerance for bad comedies. It's kind of like Mikhail's Navy for me, where I'm like, this has, <laughs> this has no business of being it, made. But... Mikhail's Navy. I don't know. I find that's almost more funny because it's so There's bad. There's more actors you like in it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I also like the movie's trying to take itself seriously more in some ways. Was it? Well, I mean, <laughs> like, it presented more of a plot than the stupid's random whatever we're doing. That one was kind of comically lazy. Uh -huh. And the thing with the stupid's, I feel like Tom Arnold was trying more in mm -hmm. the stupid's. <laughs> Like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what else you do with these characters, right? Uh, like, I don't think it was anything about his performance that was bad. I think the movie, was bad. <laughs> the movie wasn't good, is the thing. <laughs> he was Stanley Stupid. <laughs> the winner of the Oscar is Tom Arnold <laughs> for the Stupid! Yeah! He gives a tear-felt speech. Like, this is what I wanted for years. I owe it you all. Finally recognize my work. <laughs> I want to thank God first and foremost. We're all to that claymation dog. <laughs> the claymation dog comes up on stage. <laughs> Here's the keys, idiot. <laughs> the aliens. Yeah. And then he kisses a battery, and then he never leaps home. <laughs> Sam, I'm not helping you ever since Mikhail's Navy. I'm not working yeah. with Tom Reynolds again. Tom, go blow yourself.
There's a lot of better things to watch that have a similar premise that just aren't so insulting. It's not <laughs> a annoying. good movie. It's not yeah. a good movie. <laughs> yeah. There's some stuff that's kind of so lame it made me laugh. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but I can't say like I was miserable. It was funnier watching it with you because you you hated this movie. <laughs> It's Oscar material, so that's yeah. that's my recommendation. Watch it if if you like hard hitting dramas. <laughs> if you, you want to see tear felt performance, if you want to see a, a stellar performance by Tom Arnold. Watch <laughs> Tom Arnold. You know what? John Landis, not his finest hour. Tom Arnold, maybe. But maybe Max his Landis's finest, finest hour. <laughs> All downhill after that. <laughs> Praise the Lloyd, everyone. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs>